And where do you think this comes from, Helen? Because I'm quite persuaded by the argument that, and I don't hear many people making this argument, but I'm sort of thinking about more and more that it is the development of technology that allows people to, you know, transition more more effectively, if you like, and, and to pass more as the other sex and so on, that sort of opened this up. Uh, mm. And because of that, we are now in the position they're in. There are other people who go, well, it's the academics in the 60s. And wh where do you think this comes from? I think like all really interesting and strange phenomena, it's a perfect storm. Like a lot of things arrived at the same point together. I think there probably have always been people who have thought that they would like to be the opposite sex or that they were meant to be the opposite sex. And we used to know until we'd forgotten like how that worked out, like how that happened. And so, you know, in the 70s and 80s, there were these prospective studies where they identified little boys who said ardently that they thought they were meant to be little girls. Mm -hmm. And they followed them into adulthood and what they were was gay. Because there's a strong, very strong link between being really highly gender nonconforming in childhood, early childhood, and growing up to be gay. Um, so those kids, they look around them. They don't, they're not born thinking I was meant to be a girl or I was meant to be a boy. They look around them and they think, why am I so different? Why are people treating me like this? You know, why do I not fit in? Why does my dad drag me out to rugby matches and grab my Barbie doll away from me or whatever, you know? So those kids, they learn from the society that they're in that they should have been the opposite sex. There's always been that. And so some of those kids just grow up and they, they work out they're gay and that's fine. I, I mean, I should say it's not all that they're gay, but anyway, it's just like strong statistical link. Um, so there was always that. And then along came medical technology that allowed, you know, some surgeries and so on, quite brutal surgeries and not terribly effective still. But anyway, those surgeries started. Then I do think the academics had something to do with it. Um, you know, there's this whole move, since, you know, postmodernism, what they call the postmodern turn, which is when you stop thinking that words describe reality and you start thinking that words create reality. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, both of those things are true. Mm -hmm. You know, words do create reality. They, they start wars. They, you know, they make things happen. But they also describe reality. I can't just say any word means what I like and <laughs> still live in a world where, you know, trains run and operations are successful and, you know, that sort of thing. So, so the postmodern turn is like moving away from the reality and towards the words. And then they just get like kind of intoxicated on it and unmoored from anything. And then along comes the Internet. And I would say that's the last of the, the pieces I would pick out that, um, you know, in an Internet world, in an online world, you forget that you're actually a physical being very easily. Like you live through your avatar, you see people on screens, you're not doing manual labor. Um, you know, we've, we've delayed childbearing. People have fewer children. Lots of people have no children. You just you just can actually pretend much more successfully that men and women are just more similar than they are. So, yeah, I mean, that's not all of it by any means. Buy the book if you want to know the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, those are the bits I'd pick out to get us where we are, where we say that there's no difference between men and women or that men and women are arbitrary categories that we can redefine as we wish. But, Helen, there's also as well several strands to this because uh, the people, or normally men who transition later on in life, are very different, like we say, to young boys who want to transition, but also the young girls who yep. will then want to transition to be boys... That's a completely different thing entirely as well, isn't it? Men and women are different. <laughs> and, and their motivations for wanting to be the opposite sex are very different too. Um, and then sexualities are different. Most people are straight. A few people are gay. Some people are, you know, on a spectrum of bisexuality in between. So those people are going to have different motivations as well. And you see, it's funny how you see the differences between men and women more clearly when you look at men and women who don't want to be men and women. So, the, I mean, by and large, the women who transition are lesbian if they're adults or they're teenage girls who are going through adolescence and finding it tough. Adolescence always is tough but for girls you know there's a whole you know it, it's earlier than it used to be you may be 11 when men start gawping at your tits and you know it's not very pleasant and you think life would be easier as a boy uh, and then you look online and you say why do I feel so uncomfortable with my body why do I feel uncomfortable being me and the answer you'll get is trans. Now, that wasn't true 10 years ago. 10 years ago, you got better advice. But now the advice is if you think you may be trans, you probably are. So that's that bunch. And then the little boys, uh, yeah, I mean, they're very effeminate little boys and there's still a lot of homophobia out there. You know, there really are people who look at a little boy in a dress who says that his favourite toy is a Barbie doll and think, hmm, we'll see about that. And then the adult men, I mean, you know, the fact is 
probably three to five percent of men are erotic crossdressers. Uh, we knew that, you know, those surveys were done before this latest uh, pretense that men can be women. They find this an erotic idea to be a woman, to, to inhabit the role of a woman. Um, you know, you would have kept that at the weekend and cross-dressing parties, maybe, you know, between you and your wife 20 years ago. Now you're stunning and brave and out that lady comes <laughs> and you get, you know, you get societal plaudits for what, what is actually just an erotic interest. So are you saying that, uh, that some men or a lot of men who transition later on in life, it's an erotic thing for them? It's sort of a fetish almost? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can see that if you look, if you, if you actually look at the, you know, the, the chat rooms and the Reddit, the subreddits and so on, clearly it is. I mean, they're not, you know, they're not dressing in dowdy women's clothes. They're not heading, you know, they're not putting on t-shirt and jeans and heading out to, you know, pick up the shopping and the kid from nursery or something. It's very, it's very, very sexualized. It's all about heels and lipstick and, you know, <sighs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's just quite obvious once you stop thinking that it's an identity and start thinking like, what's your motivation here, mate?